now we will see uh, in detail about each of them in some detail and we will also see the positives and the negatives of these uh, uh, three forms of organization first one is departmental undertakings so they are the oldest forms of public enterprises so they are completely organized managed and financed by the government with the specific departments overseeing their operations right so it is headed by a minister each department is headed by a minister who controls the that particular uh, department or departmental undertaking making policy decisions and managing the affairs good morning students welcome back to plutus is right today is our 50th day right and uh, we can see with this lecture we will be completing half of our our decided topics right earlier the plan was to record 95 lectures i mean 95 days uh, but with the extension of time we can discuss 100 topics so we can say we have uh, we will be completing half of the topics uh, by end of this lecture right as you all know we are discussing economy so in that we are seeing the sectors of economy so we are uh, yesterday we have discussed the industrial sector so as part of it only today we are discussing the public center uh, public sector enterprises or psus so you will hear this uh, name psus lot many times during your preparation it is one of the important aspects when you study the indian economy right so there are lot many issues associated with the public sector enterprises so earlier uh, immediately after the independence they have been sought as the problem solver as problem solvers whatever the problems that are faced by indian economy and the people of india the psus it is imagined that they will address these issues both uh, from poverty alleviation to unemployment to uh, low incomes to everything so they were seen as the uh, problem solver solver for many of the many of the aspects of the nascent country but however uh, that dream could not be realized and uh, <coughs> psus they have run into many problems so many problems were there including sickness and underperformance we will also see those problems uh, two uh, two days before before we have seen the sickness sickness in the small scale uh, small scale uh, we can say industries or small scale companies similarly the public sector enterprises pscs they they have also i mean many of them are failed to function properly and uh, there is sickness in them also i mean a company is uh, actually supposed to uh, produce and bring profits bring profits so generally what sickness means is instead of making profits they were running into crores of rupees of losses so to run them actually to keep them alive the company uh, the government further has to invest a lot of funds every year so that the company keeps on running best examples are many fertilizer companies so many fertilizer companies so they kept on running because fertilizer is a very important input when it comes to agriculture <coughs> sector however they were loss making so to keep them running uh, many uh, many number of again crores of rupees have been kept on uh, putting into those companies another best example you can think is air india right so crores of rupees have been invested kept on in, uh, invested so even when the air india was making huge losses year by year after year year after year so recently it has uh, been um, decided that enough is enough and air india has been recently privatized so to address the issue of sickness one thing has been sought after especially by the india government that is disinvestment this in west so it has been started as part of the 1991 economic reforms however this thing has taken we can say 
accelerated disinvestment uh, disin disinvestment process has been accelerated during the 2000s when nda1 government has come into power under the prime ministership of atal bihari vajpayee right so we will also see about the disinvest uh, disinvestment process we will discuss mainly this about uh, when we discuss the main related uh, related topics uh, if you remember two years back there was a proposal to divest some proportion from the lic of india also life insurance corporation of india also so it is one of the few public sector enterprises which are making profits so there was lot of criticism uh, when, i mean when the proposal was made by the prime minister uh, about disin i mean uh, i mean diluting the government's i mean share in the lic but later government said that it is not uh, disinvestment disinvestment it is only the government is trying to it is all a few percentage of share approximately 10% it is trying to uh, dissolve so that whatever the money comes from this uh, dissolution of share of the government it will be again used to invest in other sectors so it will be used as a capital investment only but however the government whenever it comes to dis- uh, disinvestment there have been uh, there, there is there has been a lot of criticism because uh, that uh, money actually it is a capital so the capital assets they have been withdrawn withdrawn from the companies and they are being used for revenue purposes or we can say current expenditure current expenditure or revenue expenditure as you all know the revenue expenditure part in the budget it will not create any assets it won't create any assets so the revenue expenditure expenditure is to uh we can say cover the day to day expenses like paying salaries etc so there is lot of criticism there was lot of criticism when the disinvestment process was on its peak uh many experts have uh, criticized the government government policy of disinvestment so so these are the things about the disinvestment we will see when we discuss the mains related aspects we will uh, study in detail about the disinvestment and its uh, positives and also negatives right so this is some uh, we can say basic information about the uh, public sector enterprises right now we will see the definition of public enterprise what is meant by public enterprise right so it is uh, nothing but the business or a company it is owned managed and controlled by the government at various levels what are the uh, the uh, which are the levels at the central level or at the state level or even it can be local level so whether it is the local government state government or central government when that company is owned controlled and managed by the government it is known as public enterprise right so if you see the objective of public enterprises the uh the first prime minister of india jawaharlal nehru he t- he termed the public sector enterprises or big companies and the project other hydroelectric 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 power projects etc he called them as the modern temples because it has been believed that these uh, company public sector uh, enterprises including the hydroelectric power projects etc he thought that they are going to solve the problems of india so they have been established with the aim of maximizing social welfare and serving the public interest so this was the goal behind establishing public sector enterprises first thing is they will give the goods and services required by the people second thing is they will generate employment employment because they are very big companies so there will be a requirement of skilled and unskilled manpower in them next so majority of these uh, public sector enterprises they were we can say they were producing heavy machinery or we can say they are based majority of them are actually iron and steel companies etc so they were whatever the produce that is coming from these uh, public sector enterprises so those materials further used uh, they they have been working as a raw material for other public sector enterprises 
as time passed by the government public sector enterprises have also entered into service sector for example banks so some of the banks have been established by the government itself by but majority of the banks have been nationalized even the pi- private sector banks have been nationalized and the railways and uh, uh, air india you know very well apart from that hotels were there hotels have also been established by government of india so the government has ventured into many aspects even <coughs> in the service sector so this is the story of public sector enterprises so earlier this was the plan it was thought that these public sector enterprises they will promote the social welfare and they serve the people well right right so if you see the composition of public sector enterprises it includes in, includes nationalized private sector enterprises the best example is banks many banks have been nationalized during 1970s and <coughs> 1960s and 1970s right the life uh, insurance Co- corporation of india lic is also best example apart from that it also encompasses new new uh, newly established companies or ventures like hmt hindustan machine tools gas authority of india limited gale etc cal uh, is also there another famous uh, public sector undertaking that is coal india limited so it has also now uh, thought that we have to disinvestment disinvest the coal authority of india also because though it is profit making but there is no competition because coal india limited is uh, making profits in a monopolized uh, system because there is no competition for coal india limited so because of that it is running into huge inefficiencies so this um, because of this reason it is thought that the coal india limited has also has to be disinvested and the process is going on right so these are the uh, we can say famous examples of public sector under takings if you see the characteristics of public uh, public enterprises first feature is government ownership and management so majorly it is owned by the government so later we will see the classification uh, it changes on the share of the government proportion of the share of the government so this keeps on changing so whenever there is a government uh, enterprise it is said that 100% <coughs> ownership is with the government however <coughs> the government manages to <coughs> retain 50 51% of the share in those company it is still called as the government company only because the management power the power to manage still in the uh, hands of the government only right because majority of the shares are with the government only so if 51% of the share is with the government when it comes to management of the company management of the company the government has the say so the authorities appointed by the government they will take the decisions however what happens in the process of i mean the idea behind the disinvestment is to divest uh, the government share to less than 50% less than 50% that is the government tries to retain the ownership of uh, 49% 49% ownership the government tries to retain what happens now the 51 percent majority of the share it will go to private sector or private players so here effectively the management aspect it will shift to the private player though the government has lot of shares or ownership the management of the company um, company when it comes to the management it will go into the hands of the private sector so the private sector the government believes that the private sector they can better manage the company because they will be run with the motive of profits and running the company with the effectiveness the private sector is known for its management skills management skill so this uh, management professional management that will come into the uh, public sector enterprises so this is also the idea behind the disinvestment so uh, let's uh, leave it there so what it means uh, by public enterprise effectively the ownership and the management in the is in the hands of the government 
government right so whether it is state government central government or even it can be local government also right so <clears throat> so there will be some involvement of private sector uh, but the majority of the share that is more than 51% or more than 50% it will be with the government only so in this way the control management and the primary ownership it will remain with the government only so some of the examples are ntpc uh, it is established by the central government though it's a it's a, a part of its capital is provided by the people through shares right next is it is financed from government funds so the public enterprises they receive capital from the government funds and the government allocates resources for their capital in its budget so the funds will be provided by the government to the budget and next public welfare so it is thought that they will ensure the welfare of the people welfare of the people this is the idea however the story in actual practice if you see this could not be realized in fact they have become a burden on the government so because the people of india were paying taxes are paying taxes so this tax payers money tax payers money has been pumped into this public enterprises on the other way they are not producing profits they are hugely loss making so indirectly directly or indirectly the entire losses have been borne by the people of india only so instead of forget the issue of uh, public welfare this public enterprises have become a burden on the people right next is public util- utility services so it is intended that this through this public sector enterprises the public necessities utilities of the public will be uh, fulfilled and these public sector enterprises will be producing the necessary goods necessary goods like transportation electricity telecommunication etc for telecommunication we know bsnl i mean bsnl is there electricity <coughs> even rural electric corporation of india was there transportation as you very well know railways and air india have been established etc so many companies in many sectors keeping in view of the uh, services and the goods and services required by the people of india many public uh, enterprises have been created by the government right public accountability so the management of the public enterprises it is accountable to people but not directly people to the people uh, those have been elected by the uh, people uh, people that is people's representatives it is accountable to people's representatives so effectively that is accountability to parliament if it is the cent- it is established if it is established by the central government to the state legislative assembly if it is established by the state government so in this way the management is answerable to either parliament or state legislative assembly so in this way the accountability public accountability has been ensured right next is <coughs> similarly apart from that you should further know the cog also audits the finances or whatever the uh, <coughs> financial transactions are there the cag has the power to audit these public enterprises and it will sub, uh, submits its report to the parliament and the public accounts committee psc it will thoroughly examine the report submitted by the cag so in this way the accountability public accountability has been uh, in uh, <coughs> ensured apart from that in the parliament there is a separate committee to oversee the uh we can say functioning of the public sector enterprises that is committee on public undertakings committee on public undertakings public undertaking so this committee is also oversees the demands for grants made by the public sector enterprises so these are all the accountability mechanisms that are there for ensuring the accountability of public enterprises next is excessive formalities so the when it comes to formalities they are very excessive so this is also we can say one of the reasons for their inefficiency because here when the formalities are very high i mean there will be red tape the decisions cannot be taken 
speedily so speedy decision making uh, will not be possible so this also in turn led to the inefficiency of public enterprises so however these are the features of public sector enterprises now we'll briefly understand the differences between public uh, public sector enterprise or public enterprise and a private enterprise so you will be knowing the differences however we will try to briefly brush up our knowledge about the uh, differences between these two enterprises the difference here first column is talking about the private sector enterprise and the second column is about public sector enterprise the objective is uh, you know very well the only i mean the only objective of pr- uh, private sector enterprise is maximization of profit so this is the main motive behind the organization of a private sector company next is maximization Ma- uh, when we see the objective of public sector enterprise it is maximization of social welfare and ensure balanced development further we can also one more thing that is employment generation employment generation so if you see the ownership the private company it is owned by the individuals private individuals the government uh, enterprise public enterprise it is owned by the government i mean the majority share will be with the government management so it is managed by owner and the professional managers so when it comes to public enterprise it is managed by the government or through the officers appointed by the government so generally the senior ias officers will be appointed as the managers as the may ma- i mean they will be appointed as the management whether it is <coughs> cmd etc anything so the director whatever the post may be so the government especially the senior uh, se- senior ias officers they will be appointed as the management for public enterprises capital if you see it is ra- raised by the owners through loans private funds and sometimes public issue that is public issue of shares this is the methods of uh, we can say collecting the capital so when it uh, comes to the public enterprises it is raised by the government sources and sometimes through public issues so here also shares will be given to the public and the capital will be uh, <coughs> uh, pooled however the we can say popular source is through the budget allocations so the capital will come to the budget allocations only right if you see the area of operation operates in all areas with adequate return on investment so whenever we establish a company rate on invest or return on investment this is a very very imp- important aspect so if the rate of return uh, return on investment is not there it is not positive simply the private sector will close down the company because their profit mo- their main motive is profit making when a return on investment is not there not or it is not adequate so simply they will close the company so that is there so it uh, if we see the area of operation it operates in basic and public utility sector so this is the idea but however as the time passed by during the 1970s and 80s it expanded into many other areas for example hotels so some experts say that there is there was no need for government to enter into the hotel sector that to five star hotels right so some experts criticize that there was no need for uh, there was no need for the government to enter into this sector however the government has entered into these kind of areas also next we will see the different types of public enterprises or forms of organization of public enterprises so basically there are three forms of public enterprises we will see about them right first in that category is departmental undertaking so what departmental undertaking means so you will uh, very uh, well know that there are ministries for efficient administration of the country there are ministries so one minister will be heading this ministry so under that ministry there will be departments department so department 2 department 1 so there will be department so the public public enterprise it will be like a department under a ministry So the best example is railways so railways is a depart works as a departmental undertaking so if you see the air india so there is a separate ministry civil aviation ministry 
civil aviation ministry so this particular ministry used to oversee the operations of air india right so these are the best examples of uh, for uh, one type of organization that is public sector undertaking right so this uh, form of organization it is uh, primarily used to, utilized for providing essential services such as railways postal services and broadcasting so another example also we can say department of posts department of posts is there so the entire postal departments directly works under the this particular department right so the ministry overseeing this department of posts is uh, ministry of information and communication so another example is the doordarshan or prasar bharati or prasar bharati so it is also works as a department uh, so these are the best example for the uh, form of organization of public enterprise uh, under the departmental undertaking right. so it is uh, suitable for activities where the government feels that it is uh, important for the government to monitor them directly and to control them directly in the in the view of public interest right so it is about the departmental undertaking next one is so it is the brief information about the departmental undertaking later in this lecture we will study in detail about the features of departmental undertaking and what are its positive and what are its negative right so this is about departmental undertaking next second category is statutory corporation or public corporation so it is the second form of organization of public enterprise right so it is a corporation or corporate body created by the parliament or state legislature through a particular act so a particular act will be in act will be made for establishing that particular public enterprise that is statutory uh, statutory corporation so this particular act so it will define the powers it will uh, define the way of management of the company it will also define what are the goods and services that have to be provided by that particular corporation right so the best example is the lic is there life insurance corporation of india so also the banks most of the banks will also come into this category of statutory corporation so for this also it is also known as a public corporation the entire capital 100% capital is provided by the government so however in the banks the the i mean the public share has been divested later we will see that so example in examples in include, include life insurance corporation of india and uh, state trading corporation these are the examples of uh, statutory corporation or public corporation right third one is government company so this is the third category or third form of organization of public enterprise right so here 51 percent or more it is paid up paid up capital is held by the government so it is known as the government company so try to remember the differences so majorly the difference is in paid up capital and a way of organization only in these three forms of public enterprises so in the government company the government share is more than 51 percent or 51 percent or more than that then it is known as the government company so it will be registered under the under the companies act companies act of 2013 or earlier 1956 companies act 1956 was there next company uh, new company companies act has been come in 2013 so it will be registered under this particular act and uh, it operates fully under the uh, provisions of the companies act of 1956 or 2013 right so most of the business units that are Uh, most of the public enterprises they will come under this category only the government company category so if we see the examples of each of these forms when we see the departmental undertaking the famous or best examples are posts and telegraphs telegraphs is no more there so department of posts is there railways if we see so department of railways is there next is all india radio air doordarshan uh, ordinance factories <coughs> these are all are the departments uh, within the government or government's ministries next is statutory corporations if you see food corporation of india industrial finance corporation of india 
LIC of India. However, a part of this uh, LIC, a part of the share in LIC has been divested now. So it will go into the category of government company now. Next is Unit Trust of India, UTI. Right. Next is State Trading Corporation. If you see the examples of government companies, HMT, uh, Steel Authority of India Limited, SAIL, famously it is known as. Next is Hindustan Shipyard Limited. So these are the examples for the government companies. Right. Now we will see uh, in detail about each of them in some detail and we will also see the positives and the negatives of these uh, the three forms of organization. First one is departmental undertakings. So they are the oldest forms of public enterprises. So they are completely organized, managed and financed by the government with the specific departments overseeing their operations. Right. So it is headed by a minister. Each department is headed by a minister who controls the that particular uh, department or departmental undertaking, making policy decisions and managing the affairs. Right. So the parliament establishes a general policy framework for the uh, these public undertakings. Right. If you see the features of the departmental undertakings, they are established by the government with overall control restricting within uh, restricted or remaining in the within the minister. Right. So it is operates as a part of the government and are managed similarly to the government departments. Right. So it is financed through the government funds, especially through the budget. So the allocations will come from the budget. So it is subjected to budgetary accounting and audit control. So policy is determined by the government and they are accountable to the legislature. If you see the merits of the departmental undertaking, fulfillment of social objectives. So there are a lot of social objectives <coughs> such as providing essential services like postal facilities, broadcast, uh, broadcasting programs for social, economic and intellectual development. So in this way, this is one of the objectives and that can be fulfilled by these departmental undertakings. Next one is accountability to legislature. So it is accountable to legislature and in that way, indirectly it is accountable to people of India. Right. So there is complete accountability. Right. So control over economic activities. There is control over the economic activities of the departmental undertaking. So there will be the rates or charges so they will be regulated they will be very less so till now, even today the cost of a single postcard it is only 50 paise so by spending 50 paise half of a rupee still we can write a letter to a person so this is the reason so uh, the government thought that these are, these are the essential services so they, they have, these have to be provided uh, uh, in cheaper rates to the people. So the prices have been controlled. If you see the fares of the railway also, the railway fares, if you see the, I mean, where the middle class people or poor class people travel, that is second class and the sleeper class. Sleeper class. So the charges are very low. So the government feel that the rates should not be more because people, especially the lower middle class and the poor people, they will, they will not offer the higher prices. However, they need these kind of services. So in the, uh, because of that reason, these services have been provided on a cheaper rate. So in this way, there is a control over economic activities. Next is contribution to government revenue. So because these are directly under the government, whatever the revenue and for that matter loss so it will be directly borne by the government so whatever the revenue comes that uh, revenue or income will be considered as the income to the government directly income to the government all right so in this way they contribute to the revenue of the government next is reduced misuse, misuse of funds so this was thought as a feasor however on the long term if, if we see this uh, objective or we can say feature this could not be realized because there was a lot of mismanagement and inefficiency because of that reason this goal could not be realized 
so if we see the limitations so it is the feature but this could not be realized in the long term so if we see the limitations of departmental undertakings <coughs> influence of bureaucracy so you know the problem very well it is an age old problem so the bureaucrats so for all the reasons that we know so <coughs> they are uh, bureaucracy is known for red tape they are not a professional managers i mean they ha- do not have the uh, domain knowledge if you see air india it needs expertise to operate air india for that even for that matter even railways and also many of the uh, public sector enterprises like uh, uh, gail uh, gas authority of india limited <coughs> etc all these pro- uh, all these bad bodies they need domain expertise even for that matter running the banks etc so domain expertise is required however the bureaucrats they do not have the domain expertise they are simply administrators so these administrators have been appointed so that le- led to inefficiency and all the other associated uh, issues like red tape corruption etc so all these things have been next is excessive parliamentary control so because everything for doing everything they need uh, they need to take the uh, i mean permit permission of the parliament so you know the working of the parliament how it works so it has been become to take the smaller changes also every time the i mean the public undertaking it has to go to the permission of the parliament so this uh, this resulted in delays and inefficiency next is lack of uh, professional expertise they have we have already discussed about it because the generalist generalists especially the ias officers who do not have the domain knowledge they have been appointed as the management of these public uh, enterprises um, departmental undertakings so generally it is overseen by the secretary so the department each and every department will be overseen by the secretary so the secretary is nothing but senior ias officer so Uh, they lack the professional knowledge or domain knowledge so in that way it becomes very hard for them to run the company next is lack of flexibility so departmental undertakings they lack uh, flexibility in adapting to changing market conditions due to rigid uh, policies and the policies cannot be changed easily because they need the permission of the parliament or for that matter state legislature so this inflexibility hampers their ability, ability to uh respond to the market needs right inefficient functioning uh, so this also uh, we know it can be inefficiency in functioning can be due to many reasons including political influence political so because the bureaucrats are managing this uh, these companies the politicians will try to influence their decisions so that their particular region or their personal uh we can say needs can be fulfilled or de- desires can be fulfilled right so yeah incompetent and uh, incompetent staff and inefficient uh, incentives for employee performance improvement they contribute to inefficiency so inefficiency is at every level from management to even to the employee level even small employer employees so they also uh i mean they also not working not that efficiently because many number of reasons so these are the limitations of departmental undertaking so if you see the uh, agencies like railways and even the department of posts so you can see how the i mean from the top management to the lower level employees how they work so even if you see the employees of rtc also so how the i mean these people will behave with the people when they uh, come into contact with the common people how they uh, behave so you can understand so these are all the issues right. next uh, important uh, we can say second uh, form of organization is uh, statutory corporation right so feature of this one is a special act will be made act will be made example lic has been created through the lic act of india so in this way special act will be made that particular act will define from management to establishment to the working of the that particular 
statutory corporation if we see the features of the statutory corporations it is incorporated under a special act uh, through the through the parliament or state legislature uh, autonomous bodies with internal management independence so these are autonomous bodies autonomy is there uh, for internal matters there is independence yet they are accountable to parliament and state legislature uh, they possess separate legal existence with the capital only provided by the government the it is managed by the board of directors nominated by the government comprising individuals trained and expert and the, who has experience in business management so here the controlling authority is board of directors when it comes to the departmental undertaking uh, it is the minister he has all the power right right so it is expected that these uh, statutory corporations they will be self sufficient but can seek uh, government assistance if needed right so employees are recruited based on the corporation's requirements and the recruitment terms set by the uh, the recruitment terms are set by the board of directors only right. merits of the statutory corporations if you see so expert management because board of directors they will take the major major decisions when it comes to internal operations in this way expert management is assured internal autonomy is there so there is no need to seek permission of the parliament for every aspect every decision that has be that has to be taken internally so internal autonomy is there so within the power given so they can take whatever the decisions they can be accountability to parliament so here also accountability to parliament is there uh, ensuring high efficiency and accountability for public scrutiny flexibility is there so they enjoy operational and financial independence facilitating efficient operation another feature is promotion of national interest say so they protect and promote national interest and uh, guided by government policy decisions so lic is the best example for this so it is one of the few successful we can say government enterprises and we can say it serves the still serving the people well so when it comes to claims the claim rate i mean the acceptance rate is very high for the li lic of india so the insurance claims if you see the private sector the private sector insurance companies they will try to reject the claim insurance claim on the one pretext or other so however when it comes to lit lic of india so it has become another name second name for trust so this it is one of the few examples in the public sector enterprises which are running in a successful right. so these are the merits of the statutory corporations if you see the limitations right government interference so still the government can interfere in the i mean functioning of the uh statutory corporations right so in practice there is often excessive government interference in their operations this interference can hinder efficient decision making and operational autonomy so basically this interference is it will come from the political leaders or we can say political leadership especially the ministers they will try to influence the decision making of these companies Uh, next uh, neg uh, negative point is rigidity right so amendments to activities and rights of statutory corporations still they need the permission of the parliament so if any changes are required the act through which uh, this uh, <coughs> we can say public enter enterprise has been created it has to be amended so in this way until the particular act be has been amended so this uh, the i mean change in operations cannot take place so in this way there is lot of rigidity in this also right next is ignoring commercial approach still they are run for the social welfare so when a particular body or company runs for the social welfare the profit is compromised profit uh, component is mag maximized so some experts uh, criticize that government is not there for charity government is not doing charity so the government should per, uh, forget about the service to the people 
because it is not a, not a charity organization at we and it should focus on especially the uh, public corporations they focus on profit making so uh, during though they can provide services to the people the services it has to provide services but it should uh, collect proper service charges for the services provided by the public corporations so it is the opinion of one section of economies right so here uh, the commercial approach has been we can say somewhat compromised right so this is the uh, this is about the we can say limitations of uh, second gear category of uh, we can say uh, organization that is statutory corporations now we will see about the government company so they are these companies they are registered under the companies act of 1956 or 2013 also so all the regulations that are there in these acts they are applicable to the government companies if we see the features so it is registered registered under the companies act of 1956 or 2013 it possesses a separate legal entity um, entity capable of legal actions such as suing and being sued and acquiring property in its own name annual reports of the government companies must be presented in the parliament right. capital is only or partially provided by the government so in partially owned companies capital comes from both the government and the private investors but the central government must own at least 51% of the paid up capital it is also managed by the board of directors uh, there will be government appointed directors uh, they will be in majority depending i mean based on the share of the government and the private sector the strength of the board of directors from each uh, we can say entity will be decided however the uh, board of directors appointed by the government they will be in majority right right so accounting and audit practices they resemble those of the private entities so auditing will be similar to that of the private company so though the auditors they will be appointed by the government so they will be auditing the company independently right so employees here are not civil servants and the personal policies are regulated according to the company's articles of association right so here the employees who are there they are not civil servants or public servants in the rest of the two we will call them as civil servants or public servants right. so merits if you see a uh, simple procedure of establishment simply uh, the procedure under the companies act uh, to establish a company it is relatively simple so simple procedure for establishment efficient working on business lights so it is for when it comes to management so the management is very professional the company will be run as a private entity which is working for the profit so the business line it will working on the lines of business efficient management we have understood so the since the annual report of government companies is presented before both houses of power for discussion their uh, management operates cautiously ensuring efficiency in business operations next is healthy competition uh, government companies often provide healthy competition to the private sector best example is banks so there are banks in the public sector also there are banks in the private sector also however the government banks are providing very healthy competition to the banks in the private sector best examples you know very well sbi is there many other public sector banks are there canara bank is there many ilahabad bank is there many other banks are there so we can say the government sector banks are leading the way when it comes to banking so in this way they provide a healthy competition similarly uh it is thought that air india will provide a proper competition to other airlines private airlines whatever uh, there were jet airways etc uh, bsnl also it is thought that it will provide a uh, good competition in the uh, telecom sector uh, telecom sector uh, also it is thought that they will prevent the monopolization or complete privatization of these areas however they fail to provide proper competition so there are best examples also also there are not such so great examples also so if you see the limitations of government companies lack of initiative 
so management in government companies they may hesitate to take decisions uh, due to concerns about the public accountability some directors may lack enthusiasm for fear of public criticism so this is often known as the policy paralysis so the three c's cbi cbc central vigilance commission and and cag so uh, because of the fears that if we take a decision innovative decisions if that uh, that does not work the board of directors or the management uh, they may be penalized for that so in that way they think that they i mean in that way they think that they should not take any innovative step so in this way the innovativeness is being dying down because the management is at the end of the day it is accountable to the government and there are anti corruption bodies like uh, cag is there cbc is there central vigilant uh, vigilant commission vigilance commission and also the cbi is also there now we also have lokpal and lokayukta so all these reasons for all these reasons they lack initiative the management who is appointed here they fear there is a fear of taking decisions here next is lack of business experience so the management of government companies is often entrusted to administrative service officers so here also the management is generally the senior ias uh, senior ias officers so they lack domain knowledge as we, we have discussed earlier so here also the required business management uh, business experience is still lacking next is changes in policy and management so the policies and the management of government companies frequently change with the shifts in the government so in this inconsistency in rules policies and procedures can create instability and hinder the hinder the effectiveness of enterprises so these are the limitations of government companies broadly now we will understand the importance of public sector enterprises so in a mixed economy like ours both the private sector and the public sector they play vital roles in contributing to the economic development right so public sector enterprises they are established by the government we have studied about them now we will understand the importance of public sector enterprises as a whole right now we will see the importance of public enterprises so this topic is not only important for the prelims but also it is important for the from the mains point of view also right so first is development in vital sectors so the public sector enterprises they are undertake in areas where it is very very important for the public of, uh, people of india right so examples include electricity generation machine building the dam construction right so uh, by investing in sectors like these they immensely fulfill the public interest so this is one of the important significant next is regional development so <coughs> the establishment of public sector enterprises it is thought as one solution it is one of the solutions for regionally balanced development regionally balanced development so uh, the government earlier tried to establish the companies where the region is backward backward region in backward regions the companies uh, used to be established so it will develop uh, many other avenues for the people around these uh, areas like first thing is employment both direct and indirect employment so other services like roads etc transportation will develop so other associated industries will come into this area in this way thus uh, that particular region will be uh, developed however in certain cases this uh, particular aspect has been backfired because so if you are taking a company and establishing in it in a uh, we can say relatively backward area and uh, hinterland so the availability of raw material so this has been prob this has become a problem for that companies which are highly dependent on specific raw materials also the lack of availability of skilled manpower this has become another in hindrance and also the infrastructure other infrastructure like availability of electricity availability of water so in these kind of uh, the companies has to face these kind of problems so because of this reason they become inefficient and they fail sick 
they were not performing well however the intention they have become one of the important aspects when it comes to regional development right so they uh, try to uh, promote regionally balanced development by establishing industries in various parts of the country right so for example if you see the bilai steel plant in madhya pradesh led to the growth of several small industries in that particular state next is development of basic industries so the public enterprise has played a crucial role in establishing the base, uh, basic industries such as uh, oil in oil oil refineries coal coal authority of india gas gale is there gas authority of india limited iron iron and steel industry isco we have studied etc so the government try to establish public enterprises in these basic industries so the raw material coming from these companies uh, sorry the product 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 that is come from these companies it has been utilized as a raw material in other companies other smaller companies next is reducing economic inequalities so through the goods and services provided by the these companies and also through the employment generation it is thought, i mean it is thought that the economic inequalities can be addressed through the public enterprises right next is promotion of import substitution uh, substituting industries so this is also one of the goal uh, during the 1960s and 1970s we have seen one of the focus of industrial sector was is to import substitutions so whatever the imports we are making from the we can say the foreign countries uh, especially the developed countries like uh, you i mean heavy machinery etc so the government thought that those imports should be uh, substituted we have to develop them in india because uh, when we purchase those when we import those things we have to spend huge foreign exchange and also we are dependent uh, we are depending on the uh, some other country for our requirements so this is thought that in this way only we have lost independence so after getting the independence it is thought that we should not depend on any other country so this is also one of the reasons for trying to achieve import substitution so many of the companies have been established to produce goods earlier either to we are importing from other countries right so public enterprises promote industries that reduce imports and increase exports contributing to the country's economic progress next is fair distribution of natural resources so these public enterprises ensure fair access to essential resources like land oil coal etc uh, at a reasonable prices benefiting all sections of the society next is important aspect national security so industries related to national security like drdo are there so production of these uh, i mean produced production of fighter planes arms and they are interested to public enterprises to ensure country's security and also isro is also there it is also working hard uh, i mean for the betterment of the people by produce i mean contributing through satellites etc right so this is the significance or importance of the public sector enterprises so now we will try and understand the current scenario what happened with the public sector enterprises i have said there are few examples which are performing well uh, like uh, <coughs> lic is there gale is there gas authority of india limited coal authority of india is making profits but it is a mono monopolized the it is making profits in the monopolized uh, environment next is ongc is there it is also performing well so there are examples which are performing well but other areas if especially if we take the examples of fertilizer companies fertilizer companies air india we have seen the example bsnl we have seen bsnl is there railway if you see so all these they are known for inefficiency and loss making so the experience is mixed so to address this aspect disinvestment has come it is also uh, alternatively known, uh, known as privatization so these things have happened let's see and understand further what happened with the public sector enterprises right so at the independence india's economy was largely agrarian we have seen that uh, 
uh, industries were there but very few because during the rule of the british so we have seen the aspect of deindustrialization right so to overcome this uh, the government has thought that we should establish the enterprises in the public sector so the recogn- uh, recognizing the need for a uh, state intervention to spur the economic growth the government began investing in various sectors including industries right so from initial investment of rupees 29 crores across five central public sector enterprises at the start of the first five year five year plan so the investment after that increased a lot so as in 2000 according to 2016 data so there are 239 public sector enterprises are there with investment of 3 lakh approximately 4 lakh crore 4 lakh Right. these public sector enterprises they significantly contributed to augmenting the central government's resources with a notable contribution of rupees 1 lakh 10000 crores uh, to the central exchequer during the fiscal year of 2014 15 so try to get the updated data i am giving the data available for you right so there are however they had to face lot of challenges like so many public sector enterprises they have faced challenges such as low returns on capital investment and operational limitations we have understood the operational limitations impacting their overall performance so to overcome these challenges government has taken certain initiatives such as government of india implemented various measures to enhance the performance of public sector enterprises including policy reforms and a restructuring efforts right policy reforms during 1991 government has announced uh, the industrial policy aimed at improving the public sector enterprises uh, performance and portfolio right so these economic reforms during 1990s they have emphasized on liberalization privatization and globalization uh, in that way it try to reshape the public sector enterprises so re- reshaping is nothing but diluting the share of the government in the these public enterprises by bringing in the uh, private management right so one of those efforts uh, to uh, improve the performance of the public sector enterprises is categorization of the public sector enterprises so the enterprises which are performing better so there is they, they have been categorized and they have given some autonomy in their functioning so whatever the public sector enterprises they are performing well so based on their paid up capital and uh, we can say <coughs> the business so they have given some autonomy in the function so first we will see the category and according to the category the highest category of uh, public sector enterprises they have received highest level of autonomy in functioning so the category is like maharatna navaratna and mini ratna so first thing is maharatna so it has been this category has been introduced in 2010 so the concept of maharatna it was introduced in 2010 granting enhanced powers to public sector enterprises like ongc ntpc and the sale uh, sale uh, steel authority of india limited so granting them enabling them to compete more globally so there is there has been autonomy given to these three enterprises by granting the status of maharatna next second category is navratnas so this category was earlier classified classification is earlier only it has been brought in in 1997 so nine public sector enterprises they were identified as navratras granted autonomy for capital investment joint ventures and the capital raising so earlier the categorization of maharatna these three entities also ongc ntpc and sail they were in the category of navratnas so earlier there used to be uh, navratnas and mini ratnas however later during the 2010s the maharatna category has been uh, brought up and further autonomy has been given to these companies. so in 1997 only several uh, public sector enterprises have been recognized as mini ratnas 
they have also given certain level of autonomy in their operations so this identification categorization and uh, i mean giving certain level of autonomy is to ensure to improve their functioning and so that they can compete well with the private sector so not only in india but also uh, with the companies uh, the outside companies like mncs so that uh, this particular uh, autonomy has been given to next is revival and restructuring efforts have been there so the government to prioritize the revival and the restructuring of public sector enterprises to enhance their performance productivity and profitability right right so special emphasis was placed on addressing sick and chronically loss making enterprises sick industries i have discussed and also the loss making companies through interventions by bodies like board for restructuring of public sector enterprises right so if we see the achievement of this uh, board for re- uh, reconstruction of public sector enterprises it recommended uh, several revival plans for several central public sector enterprises with the government approving plans for numerous cases signaling processing revitalizing these entities so these are the some of the efforts similarly uh one other concept has been brought in that is agreements with the companies so the government has to uh, sorry the company public sector enterprise will come into an agreement with the government that i will achieve these many goals by this particular year so there is a uh, agreement between the government and the particular uh, uh, government undertaking or public sector enterprise so there uh, ap- according to this agreement the uh, whatever the company is there public, public enterprise is there it has to show the performance for that the government give, will give its uh, give the company the autonomy required so autonomy will be given to the company the company will come into an agreement will make an agreement with the government then it will have the operational autonomy so it can take its own decisions internally so this kind of autonomy has also been provided for the public sector enterprise so this is one other we can say measure to improve the functioning of the public sector enterprises still we can say uh, there are many problems when it comes to public sector enterprises still they are uh, many of the public enterprises they have been a burden on the government because the uh, valuable tax payers money is being used to keep them alive keep them running though they are making huge losses so this i mean there has to be a solution so the disinvent uh, disinvestment process so it is uh, seen as a way through for addressing the problem uh, i mean divesting the share of the government from uh, the public sector enterprises we can say this is not a one stop solution so it is not a proper solution there is no use by divesting the share of the government from the public sector and uh, we are using that uh, whatever the uh, money that is coming from the disinvestment so most of that money earlier it is promised that it will be again used to uh, invest in the capital assets only to create the new companies etc or to improve the functioning of the companies existing companies but most of the money that has come from the disinvestment it is used for uh, revenue expenditure i mean to meet the day to day expenses of the government so the new uh, right this is one issue and the next thing is uh, uh from 3 to 4 years back we are seeing a new phenomenon that is government is using the funds of one particular uh, using the funds of or shares of one public sector enterprise to purchase or disinvest the another public sector enterprise so for example the funds of lic of india the money of the lic of india that particular money has been used to purchase shares in another public enterprises for example uh, the railways so the money in the lic has been used to purchase the shares in the railways so <coughs> or one another organization rural electricity corporation of india one organization is there so the funds of lic have been used to purchase shares in that particular organization 
so i'm giving examples <clears throat> try to know exactly which companies or which public enterprises uh, funds have been used to disinvest other public enterprises so that you can quote one or two examples in the examination especially in the main examination so there is no justification for this by using uh, funds or surplus of one company to purchase uh, another uh, company shares and uh, disinvesting doing disinvestment in that company right so these are the uh, issues associ- associated with public sector enterprises so try to be aware of all this now we will see a question uh, from this topic so not only for uh, prelims this topic is very very important from the mains point of view also so try to be uh, try to have a clear knowledge about this topic. right the question is uh, why the government of india is disinvesting its equity in the central public sector enterprises this is the question the options are the government intends to use the revenue earned from the disinvestment mainly to pay back the external debt so this is an incorrect statement because this is not the in- intention uh, not to use the funds that are coming from the disinvestment to meet the revenue expenditure so paying back the ex- external debt is we can say it is not a capital investment it is not a useful investment right so the intention the i mean the government at that time declared that whatever the funds that are coming from the disinvestment it will be used for uh creating capital assets only like creating new companies or reviving the new companies so that they are uh, reviving the companies so that they work uh, they can work properly so this was the promise right so this statement is incorrect next is the government no longer intends to retain the management control of the central public enterprises so this is also not correct uh, it is nowhere mentioned that the government uh, no longer wants to uh, retain the management control of central public enterprises so only in few companies the management has been divested come i mean the management has been transferred to private sector in uh, still in many of the public sector enterprises the management control is in is with the government only right so it is uh, you can say it is a extreme statement it is an extreme statement so generally in upsc exams the extreme statements will be tend to be incorrect so in this way also you can eliminate this statement so statement 2 is also incorrect the correct option is option d neither one nor two no none of the statements are right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the class i'll see you next time until then have a good day Thank you.